Nah, it's 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 bitter. Ooh. Ooh, sharp on the tongue. Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person who decided to make a coffee this morning with milk that they're pretty sure has gone off. In fact, should coffees taste sour? Probably not. Still, it's less effort than going down the shops and buying a new one, isn't it? Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than Darth Hayes for their suggestion of co-op games that made you hate your friends. Now, this is the thing, man. I've had to change it a little bit because YouTube apparently doesn't track as well using the terms co-op. So I've changed it to video games that make you hate your friends. But still the tone is the same. And this is the thing, when it comes to playing video games with mates, there's usually none better a feeling than when you trounce a big bad or see things through to a climactic finish with a friend by your side. But sometimes these games in question allow you to be utter dicks, ruin things for your friend and your friendship in general, and basically just sour the experience. Yay! So let's take a look at them today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games that will make you utterly hate your friends. And you know the drill by now, say hi to me here in the live chat, and also drop your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. And with that in mind, let's get on with that list. Number 8, Fall Guys. I swear to all of the gods that may be listening around this universe that the Fall Guys video game is quite possibly the most evil thing I have ever come across in my tenure in the video games industry. Seriously, while it might look that butter wouldn't melt in its mouth thanks to its cutest hell aesthetics and music, that butter has only evaporated because the inside of this game is a bloody hellscape filled with bullshit backstabbing and by god I'm gonna absolutely murder you for doing that mate. Now this all stems from the central conceit of this game being win at all costs but unfortunately becomes survival of the test very quickly. Rewarding players for blocking others off, exploiting level designs, and altogether making everyone else's lives as horrible as possible. And we all know the sheer gut punch of having your tail stolen in the final seconds of a match, but this is made all the more terrible when your supposed friend is the one that's done you dirty. And things only escalate when they reach the final round if you've got a friend in tow, because things become very Lion King at that moment. It's all very long live the king. <gasps> Dad! Oh, stampede! But in Fall Guys form, it might look adorable, but it's horrible. And it makes you hate your friends. Number seven, Kalimba. Oh, Kalimba, how I loathe thee. Now, to be clear, Kalimba is a fascinatingly brilliant game with an incredibly simple yet glorious premise. Now, you see, you control a set of totem pole looking characters that must traverse a stage filled with obstacles and pitfalls. However, much like a pig's penis, there is indeed a nasty twist. For you see, the obstacles on the top and lower half of the screen don't match up, meaning that when you're jumping to clear one set, you might actually be inadvertently launching your other character into some deadly roof spikes. Now, when combined, this makes for a challenging and rewarding experience where you need to use a lot of patience, skill, and perseverance in order to see things through. And can you imagine which things get completely ruined when you add another human into the mix? Yeah, that's right, this game has co-op, and it's bloody nightmarish. Suddenly, the concept of teamwork is stretched about as paper thin as you can get, as each of you now has to not only contend with your own obstacles, but now also rely on the other player not to screw you over with their bad timing. Which happens… a lot. And by the end of things, you might be so utterly frustrated that you'll be pulling a face of sheer grimacing pain that might end up reflecting some of the characters that you play in this game. God damn it, James! I'm a tiki take your ass to Toad Town and smoke you, boy! Number 6. Overcooked Let's make something crystal bloody clear. When it comes to cooking, be it for friends, family, or even yourself, it can be one of the most rewarding experiences known to mankind. It's the art of creation that you get to eat afterwards. What's not to love about that? However, it is also a very stressful affair. With so many pots boiling over and timers going off all over the place, making for a soundtrack to a personal meltdown, it's not exactly easy. Now what I want you to do is take all of that, sprinkle in some screaming kids, some demanding customers, and an atmosphere so utterly tense that you'd swear you were working inside a bloody pressure cooker, and you've got Overcooked, a game purpose-built to p*** 
hard boil your friendships. Trying to work together as orders come in immediately becomes stressful because invariably somebody will have to designate themselves as head chef and start barking out orders. And as dishes usually require the whole team to be pulling their weight at all times, this means that when things go wrong, they go wrong fast. On top of this are levels that see the kitchen shifting all over the place, obstacles that block off certain areas for some players, and of course the possibility of random fires, making overcooked a heart attack at even the most laid back of times. And if I am to give you any advice, it is not about how to do well at this game, it is that you should definitely go and hide your knife rack before you start playing this. Trust me. In fact, you know what? This bubbling rage that I feel swelling up within me has given me inspiration for today's musical interlude. James and Jazz, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready, Jazz? Help me, I'm a chair. Cool. Well, I hope you're angry, because today we're doing some aggressive rap. Oh, I'm angry. So listen up. I'm a souffle you out with a hit so sweet it'll give you gout. Boil in a bag with a toe tag. <laughs> you're not a bun cake, you're a mate and i'm gonna f you've got such a dirty mouth jules james please can i listen no i ain't letting you listen to this tenderized with hammers and fists and seasoned with my own piss yeah do you like that not really no you've got a foul mouth jules sorry jazz <laughs> number five portal 2 how could I not include Portal 2 on a list like this? Because this game, I swear, has been purpose designed, built from the ground up to give your best friendships the middle bloody finger. And my lord, is it apparent that our human conceptions of what constitutes an ally are indeed in need of some work. As the number of times that you will be dropped into oblivion, hurled into a wall at speed, or simply left red in the face yelling at each other about where to place the bloody portals reaches a point of singularity. But here's the weirdest thing about this game. How can these moments of vein-bursting aggression suddenly give way to moments of pure exhilaration? There's this weird dynamic in the game where you could be arguing until you are literally bursting, saying to somebody, no, this is right, this is the way you've got to do it. And when finally the puzzle comes together, you're just like, sweet mate, that was great, I had a really good time with that, let's move on to the next one. Why do we do this to ourselves? We're punishing ourselves over and over. I was looking to brain my pal with a companion cube nine times out of ten, and then two seconds later going through and saying, yeah, that was brilliant. Let's do it all again! Meaning that this is an experience that will see you hating your friends over and over again, but at the same time instantly forgetting about it the moment you're done. Number four, Goof Troop. So, Goof Troop for the SNES, or SNES, is and forever will be an absolute blast to play alongside a friend. As the father-son duo of Goofy and Max, you've got to work together to escape a tropical island by solving block-based puzzles and throwing pots at pirates who try to stand in your way. However, there is one major way in which this game becomes an utter chore, and that's when you start playing it with a friend. But you see, the way that the puzzles are laid out means that if you put one block in the wrong place, that's it. Game over. You're going to have to go out of that area and come back in again and reset it. Now imagine trying to play with a friend who doesn't exactly want to listen to your orders or just wants to mess around with you. Yep. That's fun. And now take that fun and multiply it by your mate now realising that they can also throw pots at you as much as the enemies, and you have the perfect storm for being an utter prick. It's a joke that can wear as thin as Jason Statham's hairline pretty bloody quickly, let me tell you. Number 3. Magicka so, if there's one thing that anyone who's played the game Magicka can tell you, it's that while this game is ludicrous amounts of fun, it is also an exercise that will see you get utterly salty at your friends. Why? Well, I'll tell you, Simon Miller. It's because of the fact this game does not take things like the concepts of death or even the tone of its own gameplay very seriously at all. And that can spell trouble for your friendships. It's incredibly easy to end up absolutely obliterating your friends by sheer accident with your spells, especially when half of them take up the majority of the screen when powered up to full, and as you can imagine, when you're casting your own apocalyptic party piece, being taken down by your supposed friend is a bit of a piss boiler. However, Magicka even takes this one step further by actively encouraging you to assassinate your own team. There's even achievements related to it, and there's one spell which is called Crash to Desktop, which is giving me sort of war flashbacks even thinking about it, which will kill any one thing on screen. Any one thing, including you or your teammates. Guess who wants to spam that? Oh, it's all of my friends! 
which in theory might be amazing for killing that super tough boss that you're fighting in one go, but also may well take you or your teammates out entirely. And now imagine somebody spamming this spell and you can see situations where the only cast fit for that friend is a full bloody body one when you push them into traffic. Number two, GTA Online. GTA Online, never has there been such a hive of scum and villainy. Seriously, just thinking about going online in GTA 5 makes me sweat as many bullets as my body would likely be riddled with from just walking down the bloody street in this title. From flying car drive-bys, or should that be flybys, to booby-trapped vehicles and ever-escalating shootouts, there's never a dull nor safe moment in the online portion of this behemoth of a game. However, if you think that you can escape all of this pain and have a bit of pleasure with your mates and just play in a group game and maybe take part in some of the heists... <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, you're f wrong. Because these additional supposedly co-op missions that gangs can take part in on paper seem like pure expressions of teamwork, but in practice usually get flung out of the bloody window the moment that one of your mates can't keep a handle on their trigger finger. And as you can imagine, wild shootouts on the fly and then being screamed at by your friends to pick them up just so that they can get into a car and smash straight into a lamppost and fling you straight through the window screen is not conducive to a great vibe. And number one, Mario Maker 1 and 2. Oh, James, have you put the heat in on or something, mate? It's a bit warm in here. No. Oh, wait, no. No, it's not, mate. It's just because my piss is literally turning to steam after playing these f***ing games. Now, gosh dang heck bless Nintendo, is they really have unleashed a horrifying plague onto the world with the Mario Maker series. A franchise which, again, on paper sounds like an absolute love letter to the portly ex plumber and pals, giving fans the ability to make their own magical platforming pleasure. However, there was just one thing that Nintendo apparently didn't foresee, or indeed maybe they did, and that makes them as evil as Beelzebub. Get down, get down, you stupid dude. And that's the fact that they forgot, get down, that most players are absolute dicks and like to put others through utter hell. Hail Slime Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. Got to balance it out. Seriously, just look at some of the horror shows that people have created with these games. Levels filled with insta-kill traps, others that trick you into endless cycles, and of course, those filled with abysmal amounts of enemies to overcome. And all of this is made all the worse when you look up to see who created this utter war crime and find your pal's friend code attached to it. This literally happened, by the way, on the gaming channel when Ben Roy Turner decided to let us play some of his levels. <laughs> Ah, uh, haven't spoken to him since. The utter prick. And there we go, my friends. That was eight video games that will make you hate your friends. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And why not put down your suggestions for what you'd like to see next week here on Choose Your Own Adventure. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friend, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you're doing well. I hope you're treating yourself with love and respect. Because even though today we spoke about friends that annoy you through their video game antics, with friends, families, professionals in the support industry, these people will help us get better, move forward, and do so in a more positive outlet. So I'm just saying to you right now, you are never alone. All right? You can share your feelings with people closest to you because I promise you, doing so will lead you towards a healthier and happier future. Big love from me to you, and I want you to go out there and absolutely smash your life goals today, all right? Big love. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.